Well, that's the first of the broad beans picked from the plot, 2017. Not very big, but uh, they've got a couple of weeks to fatten up yet. To show you that one there, obviously a little critter has burrowed into that and is having a go inside. I have to be careful um, when I come to opening this particular pod to see how many beans have been infected. But yeah, I'm happy with that. As you can see, the gooseberries are almost ready as well. This particular branch is being weighed down by the fruit. Um, I tend to take them when they're that colour, when they are almost completely red rather than, uh, say, these ones over here in the back, which are quite small and still pale green. I hope Mick Watson is watching this video because I convinced Mick to go out and buy himself a red gooseberry bush like this. I think it's Hinamaki or I think that's how you pronounce it. Maybe not. Ow! Damn you. Lovely but prickly. So yeah. Ah, oh, damn. These are great. Once you can get them out there. Thorny Castle. Ah, oh, show you what they look like. Oh, can you get those? I can't really see. I hope you can. Anyway, I'll keep picking. Now then, apart from strawberries, is there anything better than a ripe, juicy gooseberry? Let's give it the taste test, shall we? Ah, oh, the taste of summer. That should be in an advert somewhere, shouldn't it? So that's broad beans, gooseberries, and now I'm gonna have a go at digging up my first elephant garlic. Nigel, I hope you're watching, mate. Right, I'm pretty excited about this particular reveal today. I planted these last year, November the 29th. Uh, we're now into July 2017. And yeah, all I've done is watered them. They look pretty good. I think the leaves are just drying out a little. I don't think that's rust. I think the plant is just ready, or the bulb is ready to come out. So right, let's give it a go. I want to be very careful not to stab the garlic itself. So, just loosen the soil a little bit. Oh, I can see it, I can see it. We have something. Oh. Oh. Let me get the camera. There we go. Check that out. Elephant garlic, people. Bloody hell. It's enormous. Let me wash it off, tidy it up. Now then, let's have a look at what's going on here. Right, so I've cleaned it off a little. As you can see, that is the parent bulb, that's what I'm going to call it, and you can see these little bulblets are kind of growing out of it. There's one there, one there, it's almost like it's giving birth to more garlic, which I think it is. There's another one there pushing through the skin, and I think what happens is they just attach themselves to the side of the main bulb itself, and then these smaller ones here, there, 
just grow into round cloves instead of um, instead of like the main bulb which is split into different segments like one two three four five these little jobbies here just grow into the round ones it's kind of freaky kind of alien like look at it giving birth to other little bulblets anyhow that's my first elephant garlic thank you Nige cracking Man, it's baking out here today. Mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. Anyhow, I haven't brought you up to the plot for a while. I think the last real video from the allotment was maybe three weeks ago. Rabbits. Yeah, I have rabbits. I still have rabbits three weeks later, but they're not pestering me as much. I blocked off three runs that were I found that were coming into my plot and that seems to have slowed them down I think I don't see any more evidence of them nibbling anyhow I'll give you a very quick plot tour starting off at the top end here behind me the uh, what are you you're a grape there we go every uh, the grapevine scrambles over the rosehip bush it's going mental this year which is what I like um, here's the fence that me and my dad built earlier on in the year. And what we're trying to do is encourage these runners to get up to this post and then run along this particular wire. And then we can hopefully start getting grapes hanging down here. Anyhow, too much chat on the grapevine. There it is. The raw beans, you saw me picking them earlier. The one and only, and I'm lying to you, there is another one under there. Uh, what you called, what you called, you were called a French dwarf bean. So that one survived, as did that one under there. The rabbits aren't nibbling on that. Um, French climbing beans, I think they're still having a go at these. <sighs> I don't know. I'll either get some or I won't. Coming down to... Wow, check this out. This here is a cloche that I asked my dad to make and he kindly did so. It's uh, I don't know, stainless steel, I don't know what it is. He's a welder, not me. Anyhow, what we did was, um, instead of welding it all together and then him trying to cart it back on the van he did it in sections and we've just cable tied the one two three is it what was it one two three four five bits together just need to drape some netting over it and I've got myself a cloche for when I get the brassicas in I mean you know it's July surely I should have brassicas in by now you would have thought but no now this is what I'm happy about. Do you remember Death Row? Well that there people is Death Row. Look how fantastic those lettuce are. When you uh, go back and watch that video when I planted them out they were just lifeless bits of limp plant matter. They, they looked terrible and I didn't give them any chance and every single one has come up and in my opinion looks top dollar. Anyhow, to the left are more little gems. I need to prick some of these out and fill in some blanks over here. But they're going great guns as well. The beetroot. Yep, Pablo F1, you can't go wrong with that variety as far as I'm concerned. I just direct sowed them and they're just getting on with it. Carrots. Um, God, what are they called? Sugar snack carrots. Brilliant, sweet, uh, finger-sized carrots. Brilliant, love them. This row here, much ado about nothing. Spring onions. Well, you know, we're in the middle of summer. I don't see any spring onions, so I think that row is pretty much dead. 
and then we've got some oh is it Lola Rosso? I think it is but I am particularly pleased with this bed uh, I covered it with the mesh as you can see to stop the rabbits they must be really lazy these rabbits because they could still get in if they tried if you look here you know I haven't really done the best job of um, staking it down but they must be as lazy as I am when it comes to gardening or in their case when it comes to eating now then a couple of months ago whoo it's bright I launched a big onion challenge and it fell flat three people I think got involved William Coleman Mick Watson and Mick, only, Mick Watson only got involved because I sent him <laughs> the onion sets and I think Jacko is getting involved as well so it's between us four a couple of videos ago three or four five maybe six videos ago I showed you my onions it looked like they had allium leaf minor and Mr. William Coleman well that man, he couldn't stop laughing at my failure since it was my competition, I'd launched it and my onions look pants let's go check my onions now as you can see, they've all perked up some have gone to seed, which I'm not worried about I think it's only four but I've got others which are growing growing, William Coleman that's right growing, Mick Watson Indeed, Jacko. These one, two, three, four. They are going to be big ones. So I'm really happy that I'm back in the game, people. I thought I'd uh, I'd lost before I'd even begun. But I'm telling you. One, two, three, four. Those bad boys. One of those is going to be the one. It may not look it, but the sweet corn has definitely perked up. The rabbits had a go at it for a week. I don't think they liked it, so they've pretty much left it alone and now it's starting to pick up. So it looks like I will be having sweet corn for the first time ever this year. Under there are, uh, I don't know, about five or six Calabrese plants. Uh, they're doing okay. What aren't doing okay are the potatoes. Sarpo mirrors, they usually do okay for me, but this year, nothing. I think I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna be buying my potatoes from a shop this year, it seems. Anyhow, let's just skip down to here. The lupin been and gone. These are all the seed heads. I'm going to chop them off. I'm not going to save any. My neighbour that side asked for some and she has them now so she's hopefully going to be growing this Manhattan Lights variety. I've got a dahlia there. This dahlia um, I just leave in the ground. I know most people dig them up store them over winter but this dahlia has just been in the ground for about the past four years and just comes back every year so yeah thumbs up for that the first flowers from the glads there we go a white variety here as you can see Mr Coleman I plant them in rows because I know how you like a military style precision garden so um, yeah the glads are finally making an appearance. The bed from hell is doing okay-ish. Uh, butternut squash definitely needs a feed. The sweet peas have made a comeback after being decimated by the rabbits a couple of weeks ago. So it looks like they have left them alone. Globe artichoke romping along. Another dahlia and the cosmos. I'm also up here to plant out a few more of my vegetables that have either been bought from the garden centre or that I've actually grown on myself from home. French dwarf beans bought from the shop. 
two of Mick Watson's looping seedlings. Randy Glavin's pumpkin and butternut squash. The zinnia seeds. And then finally, this shop-bought watermelon. Okay, here's another first for me when it comes to planting. Oh, bear with me. Gotta take it out, this heat, it's too hot. Another whinging palm. Zinnias. <sighs> Woo, right. Um, I've just read the instructions on the back and they say that you've got to plant them a foot apart. I was just gonna sprinkle some seeds in this section here, but so they've got to be a foot apart. I'm only going to get like one, two, three, three seeds in because the packet says they are big plants. Um, do you know what? I'll plant, I'll plant more than three and uh, see what happens. You live and learn. I've never tried these before. Anyhow, let's get planting. Well, I didn't expect the seeds to look like that. And I'm guessing that these purple ones are going to be pretty much the same. They're quite flat. I expected them to be more bulb bulbous, like a, like a seed I'm used to. Alright, I'll plant a couple of these just in this section here. One seed per foot. Man, there's about 30 seeds in that trench. Like I said, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, I'll get some zinnias. So let me bring you up to speed. I think I've planted out everything that I was supposed to plant out that had been sent to me. So that was um, Two of Mick Watson's lupins, but like I said, I've got about four or five plants still at home just in case these two don't take. Randy Glavin's pumpkin, a butternut squash from him. Uh, Anya's zinnia seeds. Uh, what else did I plant out? The watermelon. The dwarf French beans. I've got to give everything on the plot a water because, like I said, it's blisteringly hot out there. And then I'm going home. But before I sign off, I'd just like to reiterate how smug I'm feeling at this current moment with regards to my big onion challenge, Mr. William Coleman. Remember, those who laugh last think the slowest. Anyhow, thank you for joining me, if you have, on this scorching hot day. Remember to like, share, subscribe, but please do comment down below. And until the next video, bye for now.